There will be four free response questions on the AP exam. As part of our review of AP Precalculus Topics 1.12 through 1.14, let's go through a problem that is going to be similar to what you will see on FRQ 2. However, because of where we are in the course, let's limit ourselves to questions that can be answered using only knowledge from Unit 1. So this video is about rate of change and data modeling. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. In 1970, t equals zero, the College Board administered 14.4 thousand AP calculus exams. In 1983, t equals 13, the College Board administered 35.5 thousand AP calculus exams. In 1994, t equals 24, the College Board administered 63.2 thousand AP Calculus exams. The number of AP Calculus exams administered by the College Board in a given year can be modeled by the function e, given by e of t is equal to at squared plus bt plus c, where e of t is the number of AP Calculus exams administered in thousands in year t, and t is the number of years since 1970. Problem A, Part 1. Use the given data to write three equations that can be used to find the values for constants a, b, and c in the expression for e of t. Every input-output pair they gave us can be turned into an equation. Just plug in the value of t and then set it equal to the output value. So this is the equation that comes from this input-output pair. Let's not skip the equation that comes from the first input-output pair, 0, 14.4. And yes, these terms will disappear because of the zeros, giving us c equals 14.4, but I'm going to leave it like this for now. Here is the third equation, which comes from the third input-output pair. And that's it for A Part 1. A Part 2. Find the values of a, b, and c as decimal approximations. We could probably find these values by substitution and elimination, sort of by hand. But I'm going to find the values using quadratic regression. Let's enter these input-output pairs in a table on the graphing calculator. When you are starting an exam, sometimes it's good to reset the calculator so you're starting fresh. Here's how you do it. Uh, first, I'm going to just say it to you verbally. Second plus seven, one, two. Here's what I mean. Second plus seven, one, two. This is not only good to do at the beginning of an exam, but if your calculator is not behaving properly and you just want to start over, do second plus seven, one, two. Anyway, to enter this data, we hit the stat button and hit enter. And let's enter the input values in L1 and the output values in L2. Since E of t is quadratic, we can find the values of a, b, and c by quadratic regression. Hit the stat button, switch over to the calc menu, and choose option 5 for quadratic regression. Before you calculate the model, always go down to where it says store regression equation and tell the calculator to store the equation in Y1. You can make Y1 show up right here by doing alpha trace enter. Now hit enter a couple more times and here are the values of A, B, and C. I'm going to record these on my answer sheet. Uh, using four decimal places without rounding. The College Board will accept three decimal places. But my experience from last year is that many students were losing points by rounding incorrectly. You can avoid that by using four decimal places and just not rounding. That's it for A Part 2. B Part 1. Use the given data to find the average rate of change of the number of AP calculus exams administered in thousands per year from t equals 0 to t equals 24 years. Express your answer as a decimal approximation. 
show the computations that lead to your answer. Right from the beginning, let's define a variable, capital A, to represent this average rate of change. On the interval from 0 to 24, the average rate of change will be given by E at 24 minus E at 0 divided by 24 minus 0. E at 24 is 63.2 and E at 0 is 14.4. Let's use the calculator to find a decimal approximation. Make sure you know how to make a vertical fraction on your calculator. You can either hit alpha y equals enter, or if your software is updated, try hitting alpha x, and that might make the fraction immediately. Here is the decimal approximation. Let's store all of these lovely decimals into the letter A on the calculator in case we need to use this later. Uh, spoiler alert, we will. Hit the store button and choose alpha A. Now if we need this average rate of change, we can simply use the letter A without losing decimal accuracy. Again, the College Board will accept three decimal places. However, students will often round wrong when they try to round. So my recommendation is just use four decimal places and never round. So this is the answer to B part one. B part two, interpret the meaning of the average rate of change found in part one in the context of the problem. The number of AP calculus exams administered increases by 2.0333 thousand exams per year on average from t equals zero to t equals 24 years since 1970. No part of this interpretation is optional. All of this must be included to earn the point. By the way, if the average rate of change turns out to be a negative number, then we're going to say that the amount decreases, but you will not put the negative sign here. The negative sign will be reflected by the word decreases. If you say decreases and then you put a negative, it's wrong. B part three, use the average rate of change found in part one to estimate the number of AP calculus exams administered in thousands in 1990, T equals 20. Show the work that leads to your answer. When they ask you to use the average rate of change to estimate the value of a function, they are asking you to write the equation of a secant line and then use that secant line to estimate the value. Let me show you what I mean on the graphing calculator. Hit the y equals button and let's turn on the scatter plot and take a look at this graph. So go up here and hit enter and let's hit zoom nine. The blue curve is our quadratic model E of T. We used the points 0, 14.4 and 24,63.2 to calculate the average rate of change. So the secant line we will use to estimate the value of E of t is the line that passes through those two points. In higher level math, we like to use point slope form to model the equation of a line because all we need is a point and the slope. For the point, we can use either of the input-output pairs that we used to calculate the average rate of change. Let's just use 0, 14.4. The slope is the average rate of change. We defined the average rate of change as capital A at the beginning so that we could use capital A in our calculations instead of writing 2.0333. Now we are ready to write the equation of the secant line from 0 to 24 in point slope form. y minus y1 will become y minus 14.4 is equal to the slope, which is the average rate of change, and we're going to use a for that. And then x minus x1 will become t 
minus zero. This is the equation of the secant line. Let's get y by itself by adding 14.4 to both sides. Also, we don't really have to write the zero. So we get y is equal to a times t plus 14.4. Now we can estimate the number of exams administered at t equals 20 years by evaluating y at 20. y at 20 will equal a times 20 plus 14.4. Or better yet, y at 20 will equal 20a plus 14.4. Since we stored the average rate of change as the letter a, we can use the letter a in our calculations. So we can simply write 20 and then alpha a plus 14.4. 55.0666. We estimate that the College Board administered 55.0666 thousand AP calculus exams in 1990. Even though the College Board will accept three decimal places, because students often mess up on the rounding and end up losing a point, I recommend using four decimal places and no rounding. Just to get a better feel for what we're doing, let's take a look at our secant line approximation next to the data and the model E of T. So go to Y2 and type in A times T, well we have to use X, plus 14.4. And let's look at the graph. Notice that the secant line approximation passes through e at 0 and e at 24, the two values used to calculate the average rate of change. This dot is e at 13. e at 20 is right in here somewhere on the blue curve, and our approximation y at 20 is right above that. So notice that e at 20 is less than our approximation y at 20. B part four, let AT represent the estimate of the number of AP calculus exams administered in thousands using the average rate of change found in part one. For A20 found in part three, it can be shown that E of 20 is less than A20. Explain why in general, E of T is less than AT for all T between zero and 24. This problem is saying, let's call the secant line approximation A of t. And by the way, they're using this notation instead of A of t like this to suggest that A of t is a sequence of individual points along the secant line as opposed to a continuous function. We are being asked to explain why E of t is less than A t on the interval from 0 to 24. We can see that E of t is below A t on this interval. We just have to put it into words. Explain it like this. A t is the secant line of E of t through the points 0 comma 14.4 and 24 comma 63.2. Since A t is linear and E of t is concave up, E of t is less than A t on the interval from 0 to 24. By the way, if you draw a picture to clarify your explanation, you are more likely to get the point. But the picture is optional. This is a full credit answer. Caution! Many students are losing points on the AP exam because they are using vague words like the function or the curve, or worse yet, the word it. Avoid these words. For example, instead of saying the function is concave up, or the curve is concave up, or it is concave up. Make sure to say E of t is concave up. B part 5. If a t is used to estimate the values of E of t for t greater than 24, 
the error in the estimates will increase as t increases. Explain why this is true. A t and E of t have the same value at t equals 24. However, because A t is linear while E of t is concave up, as t increases, the difference between E of t and A of t will increase. Thus, the error will increase. We just need to write all of that up. If these questions sound very similar, that's because they wouldn't actually give you both of these questions on the same exam. I just wanted you to see the two different variations that you might see. I'm actually going to copy most of my answer from the first version and use it for the second version, and then I'll show you how to change the ending. For either version of the question, I will begin by saying AT is the secant line of E of T through the points 0, 14.4 and 24,63.2. Since AT is linear and E of T is concave up, the difference between E of T and AT, thus the error, will increase for T greater than 24. By the way, when you say the difference between E of T and AT, be sure to say it in this order, with the larger one first and the smaller one second. Hopefully your exam grader will interpret this phrase as E of T minus A of T, which will be a positive value for values of t greater than 24, and will be increasing. Technically, if you flip this around, at minus et is a negative value for t greater than 24, and that value would be decreasing for values of t greater than 24. So the order matters. If you wanted to be extra safe, you could squeeze in this phrase and say the absolute value of the difference between E of t and a t, thus the error, will increase for t greater than 24. In fact, instead of saying the difference between e of t and a t, just say e of t minus a t. This is shorter anyway. If you throw in the absolute value symbols as well, you don't have to worry about the order of the subtraction. A quick disclaimer, part c is complete fiction. I made it up to demonstrate these types of questions. None of this really happened. C Part 1. The College Board reported that the number of AP Calculus exams administered decreased each year after t equals 24. Explain why the error in Model E increases after t equals 24. At year t equals 24, the actual number of exams administered and E at 24 are the same. Since E of t increases for t greater than 24 years, and the actual number of exams administered decreases each year after t equals 24, the error in the model E of t will increase for t greater than 24 years. Make sure you mention that the actual number and the model are the same at t equals 24. After that, it's common sense that if the model increases, while the actual number decreases, then the error will increase. C Part 2. The College Board has decided to stop administering the AP Calculus exams when the number of exams administered in a given year reaches 200,000. Explain how this information can be used to determine the domain limitations for the Model E. The College Board will stop administering exams at some time t equals c years, when e at c equals 200. So the domain of e of t should be limited to the interval from 0 to c years. To be safe, be sure to include the units, which are exams and years. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.